Hey everybody, welcome back to the Wolf Pit with another episode of What Are We Eating? Over the years of reviewing frozen dinners, you, the people, have made many suggestions on how to make the meals better. And I, the person, did listen to your recommendations. Well, I did listen, I was just hard-headed. But my argument was always, you're buying a frozen dinner for convenience. Why should you have to cook it different than what the directions say on the box? And that's whether you're heating it up in the microwave or the oven. And then you, the people, also made suggestions to add butter to the mashed potatoes, butter to the corn or other vegetables, and salt and pepper if you wanted it. Again, me being stubborn, my argument was, as it always was, I'm buying a frozen food for convenience. I'm heating it up according to the directions. It should be delicious when I unwrap it and I'm ready to eat it. I shouldn't have to add any butter or seasoning. I just wouldn't let go of the fact that you, the people, were correct and I, the idiot, was wrong. Well, maybe not wrong, just hard-headed. And now I'm forced to eat crow. And the four crows I'm getting ready to eat are laughing their asses off at me. How humiliating. Cackle away, you little bastards. I'm going to have the last laugh. Okay, so let's take a really quick trip back in the Wolf Pit time machine. And to save time, and hopefully improve the quality, I'm going to re-voice over parts of the original video, and then do a new video using some of the suggestions that you, the people, have given me over the years to make a better frozen dinner. Six years ago, I originally went over the 16-ounce Hungry Man Selects Classic Fried Chicken Dinner, which contained tender dark and white chicken portions, with homestyle mashed potatoes and sweet corn and included a chocolate brownie, which cost $2.74. And believe it or not, that's the same exact picture on the box that they used six years ago. Here's one of the original meals from six years ago. And as you can tell, this is when the nerve damage really started setting in on my hands. So that's why I look so awkward trying to open up this meal. And as you can see, this meal was poorly sealed and the corn was all over the place like someone played soccer with the meal. And at the time, I certainly voiced my frustrations at this meal. There were definitely some choice words used that were intentionally poorly bleeped out. So if you want to go back and watch and listen to the original video, I'll leave a link in the description box, which is quite funny now that I look back at it. So once I was able to get the meal cleaned up and get most of the corn where it belonged, I put this meal into the oven and cooked according to the directions on the box. And here's a second meal that was going to be cooked in the microwave. And again, it looked like somebody kicked it around. Pieces of food were everywhere. So once again, after getting the meal cleaned up and getting most of the food back to where it was supposed to be, and went into the microwave and cooked according to the directions. Okay, so obviously the microwave meal takes less time to cook, so that was the first one we tried. And the commentary I had on this was absolutely classic. I complained about how bad the mashed potatoes were and about how you, the people, told me I needed to add butter and seasoning to them, and I basically said that was a bunch of horse hockey. And then I tried the corn, which I didn't have any problem with. It was okay for frozen dinner corn. And next was the brownie. And how do you go wrong with a brownie? It was fine. Now to the most important part of the meal, and the one you would think would turn out the worst, in the microwave, and that's the fried chicken. And I identified the pieces as a thigh, a leg, and a wing. Pretty much my three favorite pieces of chicken. So I'm not going to go over each piece of chicken like I did in the original video, but the consensus was... On the top, the breading was somewhat crispy. On the bottom, it was soggy and greasy. The chicken was somewhat dry and salty. Exactly what you would expect from microwave fried chicken. Now here's the second fried chicken dinner that was cooked in the oven. Now somehow, these mashed potatoes were creamier and somewhat tasted better, but still they weren't great mashed potatoes and they did need butter and salt and pepper. Next, we tried the oven version of the corn. And somehow, it wasn't as good as the microwave corn, but it was still good. Now, on the microwave version of the brownie, I said, how can you go wrong with a brownie? Truer words were never smoking. It was like Betty Crocker herself came here and made this brownie fresh. It was on point, even with a piece of corn in it. But that was a foreshadow of the following day. And just like in the microwave version of the fried chicken, I'm not going to go over each piece. 
But again, it looks like I got a leg, a thigh, and a wing. And that was until I bit into what I thought was the leg that cut the roof of my mouth, which instantaneously gave me a whole bunch of choice words to use that you can hear in the original version. I guess that's why in the front of the box they identify the chicken as portions of chicken versus pieces of chicken. Biting into that piece of chicken was like tongue kissing Linda Blair in 1973. Now the consensus of the chicken cooked in the oven, it was crispier. However, it was still greasy and soggy on the bottom, fairly salty and dry. Now let me show you, the people, how to cook the absolute best Hunger Man Selects Classic Fried Chicken Dinner. Well, as good as a Hunger Man Selects Classic Fried Chicken Dinner can be. Even though I didn't cook this meal by your suggestions verbatim, I did use some of your suggestions, but I also used them as ideas for other ways to make this meal better. But you, the people, deserve 100% credit for continuing to make suggestions to me, the idiot, until they finally got through my thick head and I tried some. Now let's go over the 2023 version of the Hungry Man Selects Classic Fried Chicken Dinner, which has tender dark and white meat chicken portions, and please use that word portions as a word of caution, with homestyle mashed potatoes and sweet corn and includes a chocolate brownie, which today, this 16 ounce meal, costs $4.79. Here's the list of ingredients in the 2023 meal. Today's version of Hungry Man Selects Classic Fried Chicken Dinner has 970 calories, 63 grams of total fat, 13 grams of saturated fat, no trans fat, 145 milligrams of cholesterol, 1,690 milligrams of sodium, 62 grams of carbohydrates, 4 grams of fiber, 12 grams of sugars, and 38 grams of protein. And as you can see, six years later, they still hadn't figured out how to seal these packages right, and they still play soccer with them. So we ripped off all the crappy plastic anyway. We weren't going to need it. As a life-saving precaution, we tried to identify the pieces of chicken first. This piece appears to be a chicken wing, but the top part is breadless. And here's the bottom part of said chicken wing. And here's what I'm going to assume is the other portion of the chicken wing, which more than likely got broken off during the soccer game. I was very confident with the first two pieces of the chicken that I identified were pieces of chicken wing. This piece looks like a piece of chicken breast that was cut off. This piece is clearly identifiable as a chicken thigh. I would feel like a total buffoon if I was wrong on this one. Now this next piece of chicken is totally unidentifiable and it's probably just the piece that's thrown into the meal to ensure that it weighs 16 ounces. But after further review, it could be a piece of chicken back. Maybe we should call in a forensic anthropologist. So here's the directions for the conventional oven and the microwave oven because we're going to cook this in our dishwasher. Come on people, you know I wouldn't do that to you. Well if you ask me really nicely I would but we're definitely not going to cook it according to the conventional oven or the microwave oven directions on the box. There's an appliance I have that for some reason I used to get a whole bunch of hate for and I didn't understand why. And it was my air fryer. I think the people just didn't like the term air fryer because it wasn't a fryer at all. Which I was wrong to assume that everyone didn't already know that it was simply a compact convection oven. But that's not what this video is about. We're not going to compare air fryers, ovens, dishwashers, toasters, vacuum cleaners. Wait a minute. Vacuum cleaners? What the hell am I talking about? Stop it! So if there's still air fryer haters out there, take a deep breath, watch the rest of the video, and just be assured I'm not trying to convert you and I'm not trying to sell anything to you. But for the record, anything you can cook in an air fryer, you can cook in an oven. And anything you can cook in an oven, you can cook in an air fryer. So if you don't have an air fryer, you can do this in your oven as well. But times will vary. Now here's the four pieces of chicken in my air fryer, and I really apologize for the lighting. I don't know what's going on. It looks horrible. Now the directions on the Hungry Man box said to cook at 350 degrees for 45 to 50 minutes. Now we all know that convection ovens cook faster than a conventional oven. And the convection ovens cook faster due to the airflow. And we've already discussed that an air fryer is nothing more than a compact convection oven. 
and at least with my air fryer, you can either set it to 340 degrees or 360 degrees. And to the best of my knowledge, that's the way all air fryers are. No wonder people hate them. Now I know times are going to vary on different air fryers. And I use mine quite often, and generally, it cooks things in about half the time instructions call for. So I set my air fryer to 360 degrees for 25 minutes. At that point, I was going to check the chicken and cook it longer if need be. Now the microwave directions for the whole meal was to cook for 7.5 to 8 minutes. Covering this, stirring that, recovering this, stirring that, etc. I moved the corn around and cleaned up what you see here and placed it into my 1100 degree microwave for three and a half minutes. Three and a half minutes later, our potatoes, corn, and brownies were all done and heated through perfectly. Which was right when our air fryer was done cooking our fried chicken at 360 degrees for 25 minutes. Even though there's enough sodium in this meal to kill any nasties, I wanted to ensure that I'm a responsible YouTuber and I checked the internal temperature of each piece of chicken and they were all at 160 degrees or higher. Regardless of what it tastes like, I've got to say that fried chicken turned out absolutely gorgeous. I think that this is the first time this has ever happened to where the finished meal looked better than the picture on the box. So per your recommendations, Mrs. Wolfpit added a pat of butter to the potatoes and a pat of butter to the corn. So as the butter melted, it was time to try a piece of chicken. And we opted to try the only piece that we could 100% identify, and that was the chicken thigh. And again, that is a beautiful piece of fried chicken. So I decided to put my incisors to work. Now that, my friends, is the sound of perfect crispification. And we both enjoyed it. That's not greasy at all. Mm -mm. And you can immediately tell from the background noise why we have to do voiceovers. My house constantly sounds like romper room. For what it is, frozen processed fried chicken, it's damn good. Mrs. Wolfpit decided to go in and try one of the unidentifiable pieces of chicken. Here's good. Which once she bit into it, you could tell it was a piece of white meat chicken, which made me concur with my original thought that it was just a sliced off piece of chicken breast. Which, while we're on this topic, please, if you never listen to anything I ever say again, listen to this one thing. This little piece of breast also had a bone in it, just like the one in the previous video that cut the roof of my mouth. So please, if you have children, do not let them eat this meal unless you take the meat off the bones for them. Better yet, buy them a boneless chicken dinner. And even you, the people, as adults, please be careful when you're eating the Hunger Man Selects Classic Fried Chicken Dinner. And I love my dog as much as anyone else, and once in a while I do give him a table scrap, but under any circumstances, please don't give him a piece of this chicken, even if you think it doesn't have any bones in it. That's my PSA for the day. Next we went in for a bite of the mashed potatoes, with the butter, per your recommendations. I think the addition of the butter and the shorter cooking time turned these frozen, ordinary, plain, dry mashed potatoes into some of the creamiest, most delicious, frozen mashed potatoes I've ever had, and I didn't even need salt and pepper. Next, we tried the corn, again, with the butter recommendation you, the people, made. And frozen corn is generally good on its own. With the addition of butter, it's even butter. Ah, you see what I just did there? People, I'll be here all week, and there's no other place better to get bad dad jokes. And finally, we gave the delicious brownie a try, and again, it was a delicious brownie. So here's my final thoughts on Hungry Man Select's classic fried chicken dinner cooked the people's way. Hungry Man dinners are what they are. They're highly processed, low quality, frozen dinners. Some people don't have the time to cook them in the oven, so they microwave them. Some people do have the time to cook them in the oven, and they don't microwave them. True story, my brother is a bachelor. He works hard every day. The last thing he wants to do after working a 12 or 16 hour day is come home and make dinner. His go-to meal is the Hungry Man Selects classic fried chicken dinner that he cooks in the microwave and he loves it. I'm not 100% sure at the point I was trying to make there. Other than when you, the people, make recommendations on different ways to cook frozen dinners, don't be hard-headed like I was and give them a try because you might end up making one of the best highly processed frozen dinners that you've ever had, like I just did. 
I really enjoyed doing this comparison video using you, the people's recommendations, and I'd like to do more in the future. If you, the people, want to see more, let me know in the comments and hit that like button. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.